Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to review an important aspect about grammar, which is there is there are pronouns questions with how many. I hope this presentation is clear for you. When using there is and there are, we have to take into consideration different aspects. That's the reason why I have included here important information that you have to remember when using these structures in your writing or speaking situations. We use there is or there's with a contraction to state facts about a person or thing. We use there are in order to talk about people or things, which is a plural way of talking about them. There isn't and there aren't are the negative way of expressing this these expressions or these structures and we use any with yes no questions about plural nouns let's see some examples in the following slide in which for instance in the first one we are talking in a singular way there is a woman at the department in this case we are using is because we are talking about a woman which is a singular way of using there there are six tables there since we are talking about tables, which is a plural noun, we have to use there are. There aren't any gyms near our house. If you remember in the previous slide and explanation, we were talking about a negative way of presenting this structure. So remember that there isn't or there aren't are a good way to express a negative, these this expressions in a negative way. And if you want to use them in questions, this is the same. You have just to follow the structures for questions, which means to include or to use the verb at the beginning of the question. So are there any stores in this city? Or I can say, is there a restaurant here? I can use both of them, which means that we can combine or we can use any aspect of grammar related to there is or there are by we have to be careful about not using incorrect structures uh, for example you can say there are if you are talking about a woman there are a woman why because there are is used for singular nouns regarding subject and object pronouns direct and indirect objects I would like you to, to please analyze the following situation. A pronoun replaces a noun. I think all of you must know this. And a subject pronoun replaces a noun which is in subject position. An object pronoun is the one that replaces a noun in subject position, while a direct object is the one that answers the question who or what. So it, it needs an, the name of a person or what, which is the action or something that happened. An indirect object answers the question to whom or to what. And later on, we are going to review the following examples. George works, he works. Here we have normal sentences and we don't have necessarily to use this direct or indirect object. But what happens here? Susan called Paul. In this case, this is a past tense sentence. But what happens if I decided not to use Paul and I would like to use another or a different word to replace it? So I can say, Susan called him. In this case, the following words have the function of direct object or indirect objects. For example, in the first, in the second example, Susan is the direct object and him is the indirect object. She gave the city to her. In this case, the indirect object is the article, the CD, the CD, and to her, her is the direct object because this person, I don't know if it, it her name, but this person is the one that receives the action. So that's why we call them direct objects. Her, in this case, or this person receives the CD. And it means that this object was directly received by her. She gave her the CD. In this case, we have a different, a different example in which the indirect object goes at the end of, of the example. And in this case, we are talking about the CD or we can use a book or any other thing. But 
our intention or our purpose is to express or you to clarify or to identify very well when you are talking about direct or indirect objects in a sentence. This is very important because you have to try to, to practice or to understand that English works in a very different way from Spanish. For example, here you can clearly change Paul by him and the, and the meaning or the, the meaning of the sentence doesn't change. When talking about countable and non-countable nouns and articles, we have very, very different explanations. For example, when talking about singular countable nouns, we, we usually use the following ones. E, en, or one, for example, a bag, or an architect, or one car, or one pencil, many other examples. When talking about plural countable nouns, we use plural, a plural way in order to express our needs. For example, five books, five pencils, five cars, five computers, or some. This is different from saying en or a, uh, because here we are talking about a plural situation, a lot, many, and this is pluralizing nouns. When non-countable nouns, with non-countable nouns, we have, for example, a little, some, a lot of, when talking about milk, water, motivation, or any other feeling that has a relation with non-countable nouns. But what are countable nouns specifically? These are nouns that we can count. For example, one, two, three, four potatoes, we can count them. And non-countable nouns are those ones that we cannot count. For example, salt or sugar or coffee. We, we, unfortunately, we cannot count them, so it means that we have to be careful when using this expression. We cannot say a sugar, for example. We have to say a little sugar or a lot of sugar, depending on the nouns that you are using in your examples. What happens with negative statements and, and why do you have to take care about countable and uncountable nouns? When talking about them, remember that you can use many other alternatives. In this case, I have used didn't, which is an auxiliary for the past, but I would like you to put emphasis on the following. I didn't buy an apple. In this case, I'm using an plus apple, which is a noun, because in this case, this is a singular, a singular noun. I didn't buy many peers. Peers is also a countable noun. And I use many because it can be used with countable nouns. And what happens in the, in the last example? Here, I cannot use many milk, for example, because many is used for countable, while milk is used for uncountable. That's why I've used much instead of many. And, and the examples or the, uh, the intention of the speaker or the writer is the same, but here be careful about using these expressions in order to talk about countable or, un or uncountable nouns. You can also use another auxiliaries, not only didn't, you can use this in the present tense, but the intention doesn't change. When talking about articles, this is something about the, eh, and or articles. They is a definite article. We use the when it is clear which person or thing you mean. Or you can use the definite article the before singular countable nouns or any other nouns. For example, you are hungry. You are looking for a restaurant. You see one and say, there's a restaurant. This is something that you have to be careful. What happens in the following example? When you are looking for a particular restaurant, for something very specific, you use the, there is the restaurant. So the e is for a general, a general thing, plus the is for a specific situation. Thank you very much for your attention.